Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we'll cover DBT projects orchestration with Daxter. We'll orchestrate the entire ETL project, the extract and load part, which is carried out with Airbyte, and the transform part, which is performed via DBT. We want to execute both steps together in a chronological order to avoid any issues. This will ensure that our transform phase only runs after extract and load are completed. There is no use running the transform phase if there is no data to transform. Therefore, we need to orchestrate both of these steps together in proper order. We will use Daxter as the orchestrator. Daxter makes it very easy to import a dbt project and expose each dbt model via the DAG. In addition, we can also trigger the Airbyte data sync via Daxter. Once we import the dbt and the Airbyte projects into Daxter as assets, it automatically links the Airbyte tables as sources for our dbt models. If you haven't seen the dbt series, then you can watch it in the Modern Data Stack playlist. This is a prerequisite if you want to follow along as you will need the completed dbt project. Link for the playlist is in the description below. This is our completed dbt project. We'll start in the dbt project directory. Make sure you have Daxter, Daxter dbt, and Daxter Airbyte libraries installed. At the time of the recording, we are working with Daxter version 1.4.11. And make sure we have the profile.yaml file in this directory present. Daxter dbt needs it in order to create the Daxter project. We'll issue the following command, daxter dbt project scaffold dash dash project name, and this is followed by the project name. I'll call it data warehouse underscore Daxter. This will go ahead and create the Daxter project, and we'll see a new directory in this folder. We can issue the following command to run this project. Daxter dbt creates a minimalistic Daxter project with only the required components. Let's go ahead and open the project in an IDE. I am using VS Code. First, let's see the composition of Daxter project. Our dbt asset is under the asset file. We see the dbt asset decorator and it is looking at the dbt manifest location. In the constant file, we define the dbt project directory and invoke the dbt CLI. The CLI looks at the manifest file and loads the dbt model defined in it. We import the constant file in the asset and from here, the dbt manifest path. In the definition file, we bring all of this together. We import the asset from the asset file. We load this asset into our Daxter project under definition. So this is the composition of the dbt Daxter project. Let's go ahead and change directory into the Daxter project. From this folder, we can launch the Daxter project. Let's go ahead and view the Daxter project using this URL. We see a default DAG that includes all of our dbt models. As we zoom in, we see the dbt models loaded in this DAG. We see the staging and the final facts and dim models with the lineage. However, the sources are missing. We can see the lineage from staging to the final models. For example, the following three staging models contribute to the final dim product dimension. As I mentioned, the sources are missing, so let's go ahead and add them. Now we'll load the Airbyte tables that are used as sources for the dbt staging models. In order to connect to Airbyte, we need a few key pieces of information. We need the host, in this case it is localhost port, which is 8000. We need the Airbyte connection ID. This is after the workspaces in the URL. In my case, this is the Airbyte ID. I'll go ahead and copy it. We need the username and password. And I am sure if you're logged in, you have that handy. We'll use this information to establish a connection to Airbyte via Daxter. Let's head back to our Daxter project. We are going to rename that asset file to dbt since it contains the dbt asset. We create a new file and call it Airbyte. Before moving forward, let's update the references for the asset file since we have renamed it. 
It is referenced in the definition. So we will provide the updated name here. It is also referenced in the schedules file. So we'll update that instance as well. In the Daxter UI, we can reload our code to make sure there are no errors. Next, let's define the Airbyte configuration. This file already contains dbt configuration. We define the Airbyte configuration under it. First item is the Airbyte connection ID. We grabbed it from the Airbyte URL. You can also put it in an environment variable. After this, we define the Airbyte configuration details, such as host. This is the server name. Following this, we have the port, username, and the password. For ease of use, we can also define the dbt project and profile directories here. And for this, we'll use the file relative path. We can import this in our project from Daxter Utils. With this, our configurations are complete. In the Airbyte file, we import the required libraries, mainly Daxter Airbyte. With this library, we import Airbyte resources. We have defined the Airbyte connection details in the constants file. We import it in this file. We define an Airbyte instance with the help of Airbyte resource. And from it, we call the configure function. To this function, we provide the Airbyte configuration. And this is imported from the constant file. We define an Airbyte asset variable, and we use the load asset from Airbyte instance to load the Airbyte tables. To this function, we provide the Airbyte instance. In addition, we provide a key prefix, and we supply it with our database name. This is the composition of the Airbyte asset. Now we can import the Airbyte asset into our Daxer project. We import the Airbyte file in the definition and provide the Airbyte asset to the asset variable under definition. Now Daxer is able to import the Airbyte asset into the project. Let's go ahead and save all the changes. Back in the Daxer UI, let's reload our code to get the updates. We see a new asset in our project and under it we see Airbyte tables. We have all the pieces in Daxter. We have our dbt models under default assets and Airbyte under data warehouse underscore el asset. Next, we need to bring these together so the Airbyte tables are used as sources and they'll be mapped to our dbt staging models. At the moment, they exist in separate assets and we can execute them independently. However, there's no link between the two. For this, we'll create a job and a schedule that'll bring these two together. After the resources, I'll paste in a schedule object. This relies on schedule definition, so we need to import it. Along with this, we need the defined asset job module. In this schedule, we're defining a job from all assets. We are selecting all with an asterisk. We can provide a schedule time with cron expression. You can provide your desired time here. In the configuration, we have an earlier instance of the schedule. So let's go ahead and remove that. Let's save our changes and restart Daxter server. This will pick up our changes. We have a job in place and it has a schedule associated with it. The job brings the two assets together. We have Airbyte and DBT asset together in a job. However, they are still separate and there's no link between the two. Daxter is not able to pick any relationship between them. DBT models are not linked to their source Airbyte tables. For example, the stage person model has view person as its source, and we can see that the Airbyte has the matching table name view underscore person. However, there's no lineage or link between them. So let's head to our DBT project and see if we spot any differences between the staging model and Daxter configuration. In the staging model, we see in the source function that we provide a different reference, src underscore postgres, and from this, we are selecting the view underscore person table. Let's head to our Daxter project and update the key prefix to this value. In the Daxter project, let's open the Airbyte file and update the key prefix value. We're going to save our changes and uh, reload our code in Daxter to see if this fixes the issue. So let's go ahead and reload our changes to pick up the new code. I think it has successfully mapped the sources. 
As we zoom in, I see the lineage between the airbyte tables and the staging models. Now we see the view underscore person airbyte table listed as the source for the DBT staging model. We have a lineage and it automatically creates a dependency between the two. However, we see that some of the source tables are still not mapped. The table where the table name starts with uppercase are not mapped. For example, business entity address. Let's open the stage entity address table. We can see that the table name is in lower case and this is causing the issue. This is considered a different object than the airbyte table due to the casing. One way to fix this issue is to update the source table as we did with few tables by switching to a view. Another option is to provide an identifier tag in the source YAML file. So let's go ahead and make this change. We have the name matching the airbyte table and identifier tag matching the Postgres table. We need to update the table reference in the stage entity address table definition. Change the table casing. Before moving back to Daxter, we need to build the DBD project as Daxter is looking at the DBD manifest file. Back in the Daxter UI, let's reload the code. This should pick up the new changes. Let's zoom in and locate the business entity address table. After the change, Daxter is able to map this table to the stage entity address. So this is how we can fix this issue where table names are different in the source. There are a few more models missing the sources. I'll update these and remove the non-used table. And once this is done, I'll show you the completed project. I have updated a few of the other table names in the source YAML file. Let's reload the project once more and see the updates. Now we have all the Airbyte tables mapped to the DBT models. We have a lineage between our sources and DBT models, and we can see that our source model and their staging counterparts, and finally, the final dimensions and facts. This is our completed project, and we can orchestrate the extract, load, and transform steps together with proper dependencies. We can run this on a scheduler or on ad hoc basis, Make sure to enable the schedule once it is defined. Let's go ahead and materialize it to see it in action. Once it is kicked off, we see a launch instance. Airbyte tables are materializing first. If you look at the Airbyte instance, we see a sync in progress. Once the sync is complete, we'll see the status in the Daxer UI. DBT models are queued and will only run once the sources are complete. Airbyte sync is complete and sources are successfully materialized. Now the DBD models are materializing. They share the same run instance hash as our sources. DBD models are materializing and once this step is complete, then the overall run is complete. Our entire project extract, load and transform process is orchestrated with Daxter. We have our source table that are sourced from SQL Server load it into Postgres and transform with DBT and finally persist it in Postgres. Daxer picked up the Airbyte tables, defined the lineage between Airbyte tables and DBT models. This ensures our source tables are always populated first. And once this step is complete and only then, DBT models are materialized. This is our completed project with modern data stack. We have carried out the extract and load with Airbyte, transformation with DBT, and orchestration with Daxter. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.